Welcome back to the Build Your Own AI series. This is the seventh video where we're going to introduce hot word detection along with some other tweaks to logic we built in the previous videos. Hot words or wake words are used to trigger a specific action. As examples, Google devices use OK Google while Alexa uses Alexa. After the hot word is detected, the computer records for a length of time to capture spoken commands or questions which are then converted to text. In the last video, we set up Google as the speech-to-text engine, but I recently discovered PicoVoice.ai, which seems to have an incredibly efficient on-device solution. I would love to try that, but I want to keep moving forward, so perhaps I'll switch to using that later. But back to hot word detection. If we're constantly recording every spoken word and converting to text, we could scan for our hot word. But that approach is both a privacy concern and a drain on computing resources. A smarter approach is to model what the hot word looks like, usually via a deep neural network, and then scan the audio stream for that model. This approach can be very efficient and can run locally on the device. My original AI platform used a utility called Snowboy for hot word detection. Snowboy works great, but support for creating your own hot words is ending at the end of this year, 2020. PicoVoice.ai also have a hot word solution called Porcupine, which claims to be more accurate than Snowboy. Both work with Python and are free to use in a non-commercial fashion, but I'm actually going to stick with Snowboy simply because they have a public model I want to use. What is a public model? It's one trained against a wide variety of voice samples. When I've created a hot word model with just my voice, I've found other members of my family had trouble triggering it. Like any form of machine learning, hot word models get better with more data. Snowboy has a public model for the hot word computer, which I think is a good generic hot word. What makes a good hot word? Well, you need something that is unique and uncommon enough to avoid being triggered by accident in general conversation. Three or four syllables is long enough to be unique, but short enough to be convenient. So let's get Snowboy installed. You'll firstly need to install Socks using this command here and then ensure that you've got SWIG version 3.0.10 or above. That is necessary to compile the Snowboy code into an application that is specific to your operating system. After that you can install these prerequisites here, then download the Snowboy project from GitHub, unzip the zip file and change to the subdirectory SWIG forward slash Python 3 and there simply type make in your console to compile the code into the application and you'll end up with a underscore snowboy detect.so file. Copy this file to the subdirectory lib snowboy under the code for your AI. So once you've copied in the snowboy detect.so, that will be here in the directory with these other files which you should have downloaded from the GitHub repository like so. Now one of these files, demo.py, allows you to do a nice simple test of the hot word, so in this case we simply type python3 demo.py and pass in the name of the model we're going to be using which in our case is the word computer. Hello, this is a test. Computer. And we can see there that it's been triggered. Great. Now if we come back a step here you'll see I now have our client voice sensor.py and that file here can also be tested in isolation just like our motion sensor we have put in the details here so update these details here to be your um, server name and your password and port if you've changed those and then we can actually run this from the do sensor function here so let's give this a try by simply typing in Python 3 and client voice sensor.py. And there we go. We're now also listening for the keyword. And if I say the word computer, it triggers the keyword and it's now listening and recording my audio voice, which will then be sent up to Google to be translated. However, at this point, we don't actually have any logic to determine the intent from that um, translated voice to text so what it'll simply do is display the result there on the screen as you can see and it's going back to detecting once again so if I were to say computer once more my command is being recorded 
So that's a very successful test and now we can give it a test with the overall application. Okay, so we're now going to integrate our voice sensor with our main client file. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a variable here we can use to turn the sensor off and on. So let's call this one voice sensor and leave that defaulting to true. And then because our client code here is going to be once it finishes starting everything up, it's going to be sitting here polling and continuously checking the queue. What we need to do when calling any of these sensors, just as we have with the motion sensor here, we need to call them in another process using the multi-process library. So we can copy that there and put in a reference here. And essentially all we should need to do here is change the references to motion to be voice. And the other thing I want to do here, because we will need to reference our voice, um, and you'll see this within where we have the manual start for it here, we're actually passing in the reference to the voice library here, so we can actually reference it when we need to do the translation of the text that we collect via the recording. So when calling our voice sensor here, we're actually going to pass in the reference to the voice library that we set up here and that enables us to leverage it inside the sensor. So for our test with the main robot AI code I've added this section here simply to respond to say I heard you say with the text that's been translated so let's exit out of here and run our main test and when the keyword is heard and our voice is recorded then we should hear the text repeated back Hello, we'll just do some testing to make sure there's no false positives. Can you hear me? I am not speaking the keyword. Oh, that's rather sensitive. We might turn our sensitivity down. And you're recording me right now. Well, there's a good example of uh, how you need to tweak your hot word, it seems. Let's try once again. Computer. Now you are recording me. Okay, and you only should be recording my voice when you hear the word computer. I heard you say. Stop now you are recording me. Okay, and you only should be recording my voice when you hear the word computer. Okay, so a somewhat successful test. We'll need to tweak the sensitivity of the hot word a little bit there. Our hot word sensitivity is just set as a variable here in our voice sensor.py. Um, I'm going to change that to 0.6. Eventually we'll move that out to a configuration file. Now you might notice I've added a new parameter here to our environment variable. This is because Pi Audio can only be used for one thing at a time. So we can't be using it to talk at the same time as, or sorry, we can't be using it to record at the same time as we're using it for hot word detection. Now because our environment variable is shared across all of the logic on the client side here, we can use it for a variety of things to control situational awareness. With the motion sensor, when we were actually detecting more motion, uh, I was finding it was triggering more and more conversations and queuing those up in the message queue while we were already talking. So I can use a parameter here uh, called talking and then I can come across um, to my client voice and as soon as we trigger a conversation down here in the logic here where we're calling chat list I can set this to be true and whoops true and then in the same way once we've done chatting there I can set it back to being false again and then that's a parameter I can reference across here in my motion um, in this example here to say if we're already talking then don't go ahead and trigger another conversation or cue another conversation. Um, perhaps I still would want to do that with secure mode on so I might tweak that a little bit but I certainly wouldn't want to start chatting again if I'm already chatting. In the next video I'm going to focus on detecting intent from the text that we capture with the hot word and then handling that accordingly. So if you want to be notified of the next video please subscribe and once again thank you very much for watching.